welcome to Scrapyard Alley. Hello everybody, it's been almost 16 years I've owned this lovely Mercedes Vito 109 CDI. I'm getting rid of it, I, I mentioned this in my previous video. It has finally come to the point where the rust has just got the better of it and I can't be bothered to fix it. So it's time to let go, time to say goodbye. But I thought what I'll do, rather than just give it to the scrap man, I'll make this video so I can just walk around it underneath and show you all the holes that are in it. And by the way, all the holes that are in this van have all basically happened in the last 12 months. I have been patching this van up for flipping years now. I purchased it in 2006 and it was eight and a half thousand pound I paid for this van and it was pretty clean then. But it was when the first few years after that the rust started coming out and I'm, I'm talking about surface rust like scabs all over the bodywork all in random places and I couldn't work it out I just thought it must be some shit metal they've made these vans of and I've been patching it and spraying it and filling it and God knows what all these years to the point now where it's nothing but it's just basically primer paint sprayed over it I would spray it primer paint once a year get rid of all the surface rust but unfortunately, underneath, there are literally holes in it now. And I, I think there are other reasons why I'm getting rid of it. I could just weld this up and get it all fixed. But there are other reasons that I'm not going to bother. So, which I'll, I'll run through anyway. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick it up in the air and I'll run you through what's wrong with it. And basically what I think of this van as well, because I do like it. I've had a lot of years of, the, of service for this van and it served me well. It's done ever so well. It's only let me down once and that was my own fault, but I'll come to that later. Anyway, let's have a look underneath first. Right oh, I'm going in. I'm actually going to start on the driver's front at the back of the wheel arch. We'll get my torch in position. This is the first hole by the actual jacking point. I've got a little hammer here, <laughs> just, just for show, but, but yeah. I mean, the trouble is, people who do welding on vehicles, you'll know that if you get a small hole, it'll end up in a massive hole by the time you've plated it. So, oh, flip, oh, flipping it. Hold on a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I think this van is turning back into iron ore from, from once it came <laughs> from the ground. But yeah, that, that's a significant plate that needs. And that's, that's like your inner seal there. So uh, it's doable, but <laughs> if you can be bothered. Anyway, let me just run around this. I'm going to point out something. The actual gearbox has actually been fantastic. This is still running, it's, a, it's about 207,000 miles now, and it's running the original clutch and flywheel. Never had to change it. So I thought that's, that's bloody good. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, I'm gonna, this, this is something of, 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 might be quite a bit of interest here, okay? The front, driver's front wheel bearing, I replaced a little while ago. But what I did, in actual fact, let me come out of the car and explain this. I, I'm laughing now, but I, I'll tell you something. At the time, I wasn't laughing. I was, I was pissed off. I really, flipping it. 
all the, all the rust stuck stuck to my <laughs> magnet of my torch. Yeah, the driver's front wheel bearing on this van got really noisy, and I had to change it. And rather than just buy an ordinary, well, brand new wheel bearing and fit it, I saw on eBay a whole hub assembly with a wheel bearing in it, and it all matched this van. Well, according to the description, it did. So I thought, well. That these bearings are a bit of a sod to press out if you know what I mean so I thought I'll just buy the second hand hub with bearing in it it was a lot cheaper as well and I'll just bung the whole hub on the job will be done a lot quicker got it all on switched the ignition off ABS lights come on went out as they should do everything was fine so I, I then proceeded to drive the van across the bloody yard put my foot on the brake and holy shit, the flipping van wouldn't stop. He just carried on going. I couldn't, I literally could not stop. The brake pedal was like, the, the AB, as, soon, as soon as I touched the brake pedal, the ABS was activated. Like if you were driving in snow, you can't stop. <laughs> I thought, what the hell is going on here? And then it dawned on me, the hub I was given, the actual bearing's got like an ABS magnetic ring on it. It must have had a different number of teeth on that magnetic ring to what was on the rest of the wheel bearings on this van. So it confused the bloody ABS uh, ECU control unit. So it didn't know what to do. Uh, at that point, the only thing I could do was pull the plug connector off the ABS for the driver's front wheel and leave it disconnected so I've got no ABS on it. So that's just another job which I'd have to do. I'd have to get a wheel bearing for that flipping 80 pounds for one of these and fitting it's a bit of a sod of a job even with the, we've got a press and even with the press it's it's difficult some wheel bearings you can press in and out easy other ones are a right pig and this is a right pig so that's another job I don't really want to do I would do it if, if it wasn't for the rust I would do the wheel bearing but because of the rust nah I'm gonna forget it now but yeah so if you ever get a wheel bearing for one of these probably make sure you definitely get the right one don't do like, like I done got the wrong one <laughs> anyway let's carry on I will try to remember what I've actually done to this van over the years but anti-roll bar drop links I've replaced them about three or four times but I have been putting the cheap ones on so they don't last too well but the bloody ball joints get worn out of you so uh, <laughs> uh, I've replaced all four coil springs all of them are broken but you can, well, you can expect that on any car. I'm pretty sure I've replaced both the track rod ends. They've both got knocked out on the actual ball joint end. Uh, both bottom ball joints I've replaced. You'll notice, I did make videos on these. You'll notice that I've got nuts here holding the ball joints onto the arm. The original uh, ball joints come with rivets, which are a bit of a pig to drill out. And you've got to, you know, use an air chisel bit of a nightmare but I did do a video on that uh, there's a there's a very clean looking alternator up there I replaced that alternator done well so I can't complain the the water pump uh, has never leaked in, in actual fact I have topped the water the coolant up on this van probably once in the 16 years I've had it it's never lost any coolant and for 207,000 miles I think that's bloody good going. There isn't any corrosion around like the engine area of the chassis or nothing. Even the brake pipes are sort of like really nice, doing well. And also, if you haven't noticed, there's no oil, there's no oil leaks anywhere. It's an absolutely lovely clean engine underneath. Never leaked any oil. Well, the only time it did there's a turbo hose that goes up there, uh, which goes to your turbo intercooler. That was, the clip was loose, and that, that had a little bit of an oil leak, and that was it. That's all I've ever had. Da da! See the, the, the front disc back plates are a bit rotten. <laughs> anyway, the, the actual bump stop, this side's missing. That's already fallen out. Should we give it a tap? I know you're not supposed to use a hammer like this on an MOT test, but uh, you'd use the corrosion assessment tool. <laughs> oh, oh dear, 
I've just created another hole, but I've, I've been, I'm, I'm being a little bit heavy handed. Let's go further back. It's still, it's pretty solid here still. Yeah, this piece, which is near the fuel tank, that's, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, not that this is really a, a load bearing member or nothing, but you know, I could probably take this bit right off and nobody would ever know it was even there. So I should, that bit's not really important. It's very crunchy, if you know what I mean. Look at this, all, all along by where the fuel tank filler hose is, on the inner seal. And look at that. That's, uh, oh, there's some sound deadening in there. Right, yeah, that's a nice hole needs welding up. Okay, I'm gonna work my way back round to the driver's side. Oh, the old, the old prop shaft. I don't know if anybody remembers, but I made a video where I replaced the universal joint for a chocolate one here. And it was like a, re a new prop shaft for this van is the best part of a thousand pound to buy new and they don't sell, Mercedes do not sell the universal joints for these prop shafts. They're, they're staked in joints and you have to buy, well, they just don't supply them. You have to buy the whole prop shaft. Obviously, it's more profitable for Mercedes to sell a whole prop than it is a universal joint. So I got a cheap universal joint, about 16 pound off eBay, which didn't fit properly in the first place. I made it fit with a lot of messing around. But uh, I was always worried about whether it's going to last or not and all the time I've actually had that joint fitted here and I've been driving this around it's been okay although it has got a little bit of up and down play in it but it's only a small amount but it, it, it is worrying though if this if this joint was to have given up there's no way I'm going to spend a grand on a, on a new prop it's just not worth it I just can't justify that kind of money because the van's not even worth this a grand so <laughs> so it would, it would have been good buy anyway and that, this is another reason that I'm getting rid of it because if this was to go what's the point the, the van's worth nothing so I'd rather get something newer that's not going to let me down now because this is getting to the point where if this was to let me down it's going to be expensive and it's going to it's, it could well, it could be catastrophic really. I don't want to get find myself stranded if that was to get out. So, best it comes off the road now. Anyway, let's make my way further around. We just move the old jack out of the way. Okay, we're on the driver's side now. You see, it's very crunchy everywhere. But it's just peeling off. Most, most of these holes, they're all on the inner sill. And it's like the main, the main chassis members, they're fine, no problem at all. Even though they're getting a bit rusty, it's only surface rust. Yeah, we've got another one here. Look at See, it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it will be a lot of work to weld all this up. It's never going to pass an MOT test, that's for sure. The exhaust developed a little hole here, so I filled it with some metal filler, which has actually done quite well. There's some good old metal filler. <laughs> anyway, moving along, you see how, you see how scabby it all is? Every, everywhere you go, it's just 
pieces of rock. I don't want to push the, it too hard. Otherwise a bloody whole seal might come off. But yeah. No, I mean, after 16, someone did point out in one of the comments on one of my videos, these vans weren't supposed to last this long. And they're probably bloody well right there. I see the old drive shaft boots are starting to split. They're not actually leaking, but they're on their way. I have replaced the rear discs and pads some time ago. Mind you, this van has been sitting for about a month now. So I've, I took it off the road sort of like near the end of January. So here's my brand new rear coil springs. They're still good. Yeah. Um, let me get my hammer. <coughs> I've got the sun shining in through the door and it's like, whoa! <laughs> it's, it's bright out there. It's cold, but it's bright. Oh my God. Yep. Nice. And that, that's the rear panel as well. That's, uh, you wouldn't want to fit a tow bar to this van. <laughs> I took the spare wheel off years ago and put it inside the back of the van. <laughs> Rather than having it a pain in the ass to try and undo if I ever had a puncher. This side is actually good. Mm. You know, the little pins that hold the, the rear handbrake shoes to the back plates, uh, they're forever breaking and the shoes keep scraping on the discs, making all kinds of funny noises. <laughs> but now, me mechanically wise, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> I've done the, like, just the basics you'd ever do to any vehicle, brakes, broken coil springs just the just the basic stuff yeah the passenger side seems to be significantly better than the driver's side that's about it what I'll do I'll just bring the ramp down a little bit and I'll just go over some of the surface rust around the outside. If you don't know, the front wings, they're plastic. I found that out when I hit a lamppost and there was no damage whatsoever. Anyway, like I say, a lot of the rust on this van is hidden at the minute because I've been patching it up every year. And this passenger front door, that's had scabs all over it and especially around where these trims go along and at the bottom of the doors I've tetra sealed it and sprayed it over numerous times so if I hadn't have sprayed anything on this van I can assume the whole van would be covered in bloody rust by now it would be an absolute right mess even though it is now anyway but this is what you've been getting these little pieces of rust coming out all over the place and like on the bottom of this door look at that I mean this has got a load of filler in it anyway Great big scabs keep appearing, but underneath the paint. So, all along the sills, it's, it's not pretty. Like the wheel arch this side is not great. We'll wait till we get to the other side. And the wheel arch, rear wheel arch, it's all, it's at it really. I've, I've filled this numerous times and it, it keeps coming through. Right, I'm going to make my way around. Oh, it's bright out here. The rear doors, all along the bottom edges, and even... Well, there's a bit just there, but... The rear doors haven't been too bad, really, to be honest. They've held out fairly well. This driver's side rear wheel arch, it is heavily covered in body filler now, and it's, it's completely, like, 
look at that. That's <laughs> springy. It, can, it needs a new bloody panel on it. Uh, the rust is quite severe there. But what really done it was <laughs> this piece here. It's completely gone where the sill is. Absolutely completely gone. In fact, the whole, yeah, the whole panel's like, <laughs> it's not even metal anymore, it's just, just nothing, <laughs> rotten. Look at that. But yeah, nasty, nasty, nasty. And this door, flipping it, state of it. I have put a few plates on the bottom of this door. This, I mean, this door, this sliding door, sort of like, is shaped to sort of like make the, the same shape as the seal. But it's had it. It's just, yeah. Oh, flipping it. I just put my finger through there. Nice. This bit's good though. That's like brand new still. <laughs> but yeah, it's just covered in scabs, and uh, you know I get I get I get annoyed every single year. I've had to go around this van, clean off all the rust, and respray a primer. Even if I was to have completely done a proper professional job on this, within six months the rust would still come through. So it just would not be worth it. But that's it. That's the extent of the corrosion. So. Uh, <laughs> what more can I say? I shall just lift this bonnet, not that there's a great deal to talk about under here. 2.1 litre turbo diesel. Absolutely fantastic engine, I'll have to say. Some people might disagree, but in my opinion, these engines are pretty much bulletproof, as long as you service them properly. And that's all I've ever done under here. Fuel filter changes, which are down there. Plenty of oil changes. And as I've just mentioned, the actual coolant in this <laughs> bloody engine, it's, it's, it's only ever gone below this uh, maximum mark, just a little bit, and I've topped it up about once that I can ever remember. It never lost any coolant. So uh, brake fluid has been good. I've, oh, I've had, one, I've had one driver's front brake caliper that seized up and I had to replace the caliper. That was it. Uh, as far as any repairs to this engine goes, the only thing which I will bang on about now is the diesel fuel injectors. For those of you that actually know about these engines, and I don't know a great deal about them, I have to admit, because I never had to do much to them, but the diesel fuel injectors have a tendency to leak the gases past the ceiling washer. And that's what happened to this. I'd been driving around all day one Saturday and I could hear it, I could hear them start to chuff. And I thought, here we go. But by Saturday evening, I hadn't done nothing about it. I went up to the Kentucky Fried Chicken to get myself a burger. And it got really bad up there. I was sitting in a queue of traffic waiting to go to the window where you get your food served. And the smoke was literally bellowing out underneath the bonnet. And I was gagging and my eyes were stinging. <laughs> it was like, I have to get this done now. The Sunday morning I went down to the garage and I had to rectify it. I managed to pull two of the injectors out that were leaking and there was a third injector which I disturbed, which I couldn't get the clamp back on. So I had to leave the clamp off and I thought the only way I'm gonna get this third injector out is to leave the clamp off and see if the compression will push it out later on down the line. And I forgot about it and it must have been about three weeks later driving along and all of a sudden the engine lost power, smoke come pouring out under the bonnet once again because of course the injector had all of a sudden given way and popped out of the flipping injector hole by about an inch. So, <laughs> so I was only running on three cylinders basically. But yeah, so I've done, I've done, I've done three injector seals on this engine and that's it. And they're all, they're all sealed up perfectly now. I did notice like the, the washers that go on these injectors, they get, they get worn away. I don't know whether they come loose or what, but somehow the gases get past them. I think it's just a common thing for Mercedes. But yeah, that's the only major problem I've had to do on these engines, on this engine anyway. Apart from that, I would say it's a pretty much a bulletproof engine. <laughs> anyway, I'll have a quick walk through the, 
the cabin round the back. And then I guess we'll wrap this one up. You see that? You see this driver's seat where it's all ripped here? That's a common thing on these zip vans, I do know. I've, I've been looking at these on eBay, and <laughs> so many of these vans, they've all gone in the same place. The only thing I don't like is where, when you do, I took the bulkhead out of this one, but when you've got the bulkhead in there, you can't get the seat back, lean it back far enough. So it, it can be a little bit uncomfortable. And if you're a very big person, you're probably not best suited to have one of these. I'm quite small, so I fit in this van quite snugly. <laughs> snugly. Especially, but I will say, like like the two seats here, there's the centre seat is not really very good unless you're a small person either, because your your bloody knees will be hitting up against the gear lever. But no, apart from that, I'm I'm impressed. I do like I do like the interior of this van. It's very nice. It's very modern looking. Well, I mean, although, although this was 2006 when I got this, it was, it still to this day it still looks nice. I'm going to open this back door, which still works, surprisingly enough. See these plastic panels, they get all kicked and broken, but that's the nature of vans really, isn't it? The floor's done well, but since I've owned it, it hasn't really done much in the way of anything serious. It hasn't carried much. I've done a few house removals, that's about it. Uh, oh, the door's still open. Yeah, <laughs> it's where it's been sitting. Oh my god, we've got moss everywhere. Yeah, look at that roof. I, I could plant flowers up here. <laughs> But yeah, this this is the long version. You, you know they make these in the the compact, the long, and the extra long. Well, this is the long version. And if I was to get another one of these, I would probably get a long version or extra long. I do, the compacts are all right, but but they're not quite long enough if you want to put stuff inside them. If you've got settees and all stuff like that, the the extra length certainly uh, helps. Oh, both these electric windows, I've had to replace the mechanisms, the cables are broke. That was, that was ages ago. I've got cheap ones as well and they're still going. But yeah, apart from, uh, as, as far as the interior goes and everything inside this, this van, it's been, it's been absolutely fantastic. Look at that. Glove box still works. They updated these and they've, they've made better sort of like radios and all that in they got the modern ones have got satellite I mean navigation systems in them so uh sat navs but this, this is quite an old one now but I say this is an 05 plate so but yeah it's time to go it's had its day well that's it I guess I better wrap this one up you know, 16 years with this van. Hello, Molly. I see you saying goodbye to your shithead then. <laughs> She's all hearty, isn't she? Never. <laughs> and by the way, not all that rust on the run. Can yeah. you clean it up after you take this one away? Thanks. Do you know what? You're all heart, Molly. <laughs> look, look at these little pigtails. <laughs> come here, come here. Look at this. Look at these. <laughs> I like the outfit. Very nice. Yeah. Sally, it's sitting there. Anyway, yeah, I'll clean up all my shitty rust off the ramp and leave, leave the garage in a nice pristine condition. As it was before you took the brought it, brought it in, yeah? You know, you could buy this van off me if you like. No, that's alright. She's too. She's got. She's got a flashy little car. <laughs> she wouldn't drive an old shit like this. I look like an old pikey driving this thing. No. I'd be careful shutting it. It might well be if it doesn't fall off. Good. Yeah. I'm going to eBay it. I'm going to put it as spares or repair. 
come in the video. Come in the video. Mommy. More like a scrap. All the viewers want to see you. No. <laughs> Bye. It's good in there. But make sure your foot don't go through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I've, what I've decided to do, I'm going to eBay it, spares all repair. Because the, the engine's still good, the gearbox is still good. Mm, that's probably about it. The, the body's. <laughs> but no, I have to say though, <laughs> she flipping heck. Come here. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> yeah, where was I? I keep getting distracted. I have to say, I bought this van in the first place because it was I just like the look of it. And after all these years, my conclusion is that it's just a well-engineered van. Everything about it is just absolutely brilliant. It's a bulletproof, fantastic vehicle I've had. And uh it's, I know it's not bloody rust proof. That I'm coming to it, I'm coming to it. The, the biggest drawback has obviously been the rust, which has let it down. So uh, I do hear that, that the later models, after 2008 or something, they had solved the rust problem. But obviously I bought the model where it had all the bloody rust problems, didn't I? So, uh, but no, I can't complain. After all these years, the money I paid for it, it's, it's long paid for itself, so I, it's got to go now. What I'm going to do now, I don't know, I, 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 had, I actually do not own a vehicle at this moment in time. I'm on Shanks's pony, so to speak. So I'm going to be looking around to see what I can get. I will like to buy another one of these if I can, but they're bloody expensive. Because of everything that's going on at the minute, the price of second-hand vehicles have gone through the flipping roof. So, I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of hanging off a little bit. I'm, I'm also thinking maybe a plane ticket to the other side of the world sounds a better, a better, <laughs> better than buying a vehicle. Uh, just leave the country and go somewhere else. Buy a horse and cart somewhere. But no, I don't know what I'm going to get at the minute. But if I do get another vehicle, it may well be another Vito, but obviously a newer one. And probably if I do get another Vito, it will be I'd have the crew cab with the three seats, two or three seats behind the driver because it's, it's more, then I can carry more passengers because this one's a bit cramped. And yeah, but anyway, that, that will be to come. If I, if I do find another vehicle, I will certainly let you know and then bring it in here and we'll go round it and see if it's any good. So, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to, for my own amusement really, I wanted to make this video. Just for my own record, so, so one day, years, years from now, I can look back at this and say, yeah, I owned a van for 16 bloody years. That must be a flip. It's, it's the longest vehicle I have ever owned, though. But anyway, <clears throat> anyway, I, 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 I guess I better get out of here. <laughs> I've banged on long enough. But I will say, though, if anybody buys one of these, because there's still a lot of 05 plates going around, that are in really, really nice condition. They're not cheap, but if you do own one of these, you've got a good vehicle. Because from what I've from what I've seen with this one, they ain't no trouble. Just general, general brakes, call speeds, anything that go in any other car. But as, as as far as sort of like a problem vehicle, it hasn't been a problem. It's been fantastic. And uh, I'm sorry to see it go. I really am. <laughs> but yeah, farewell, old friend. You know, it's, it's like letting go of a nice little soft teddy bear. <laughs> You've got to grow up now. Got to move on. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. See ya.